and welcome back. In this hopefully short video, we're on a break right now, so I'm gonna to try to crank this out. Today we published a video on importing data into Sparks, and it was focused around the requirements data. And a special thanks to Dana for her comment on that video today around importing and creating tag values or bringing tag values into Sparks. And we could speak for a long time on this. I'm very passionate about the subject. Was planning on saving this when we get to bringing in data from a database. We'll talk about it again there too. But today we're just going to very quickly touch on how to bring in data, including tag values into our project. So let's get started. So if you haven't seen the video on importing data into Sparks Enterprise Architect, I'll include a link in this video. So what we're going to do here this time is we're going to bring in very interesting data from our class diagram, our block diagram. And we were dealing with tag values. That is our primary focus in this subject today. So what you learned in the previous video, if you go to publish in model exchange, you go to CSV, go down to exchange specification. We've created a specification for application asset export. All right, and you can do the exact same thing for import, but we're gonna start with export. It helps you understand the data a little bit better, especially when you're dealing with ETL, extract, transform, and load, and you need to properly configure the data so that it can be loaded into its target data source. For those that are interested in where tag values are stored, the configurations, they're stored in the T underscore property types. And you can see if we do a query, these are the tag values that we see here. So when you're looking at tag values, all of these tag values are defined into the T properties type uh, database, all right? So when you're looking at, let's say for example, the SQL data source outside of Sparks, this is what the table looks like when you're querying and use it. There's three columns that are here, property, uh, describing the property, so property, a description of the property, and then the actual code itself. So if we pick any particular item here, you can see that we've configured it right here so that it can be exposed to a data source that can be reused outside of Sparks. So you can actually go in and manage this data source, as long as you're sticking with the rules, the proper scripting and notes here for your sources uh, when you're looking at them, all right? So when we're looking at elements and how elements are laid out, essentially every time you place a tag on an element, that element has an object ID, right? Then the property ID is relevant to the T objects property table, thus mapping whatever tag value you've applied to a particular element. So I just wanted to show you this before we get on to the next part. The reason why I'm starting with specification in export is because we need to understand how the data is used, loaded, extracted from the Sparks database. So in this case, we're going to be loading or importing the data into the Sparks database from an external data source that is not Sparks. So we're focused on class element in this case. Let me close this. We're gonna to go to model, models. We're gonna to go to my searches. We're going to just go down to where I've already configured the database right, the data, only data element, object type out of the database by object, object type, and then we're gonna sort ascending, right? So let's just go ahead and run this. And so in the previous episode, we were focused on requirements so as, a, as a data type, requirement, not plural, requirement. And in this session, we're gonna be focused on the data type class, all right? So now we understand what we're gonna bring in and why we're going to bring it in. And so let's go ahead and do an export of the 
class elements, the building blocks that you see here, including their tag values. For this exercise, we do not have to have the diagrams up. We'll just close everything and go to the main page. But we do have to be focused on the namespace, the package containing the elements that we want to export. So we're on building blocks, we go to publish, model exchange, and then we're going to go to import, export. In this particular case, we're going to be bringing up application asset export, and it's already been configured for export, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to where we're going to store that file, that CSV file, once it is exported, that flat file. And in this case, we're going to the asset repository folder, and then we're in a folder called CSV templates. And then let's just go ahead, it's application, same name as above, we're just gonna go ahead and step on it, and then we're gonna go ahead and run it. So you can see right now, it's exporting the class elements that are right here for this flat file. Now we've brought up a blank project. Our plan does not have anything in it as far as applications. We've created a namespace or package called application building blocks, and we have a blank diagram that is loaded here. We go to publish, we go to CSV, we're gonna go here, we're going to select the specification that we want, and in this case, it's application asset export. And in this particular case, it was configured for export, we're going to change the action to import, all right? So we're gonna go out and browse where that flat file is. It is right here. We're gonna hit save, and then we're gonna run it. Right now it is gonna be running through and loading this, these class elements into this namespace. It's done, complete. We'll go ahead and close it. Let's go ahead and open up this namespace. And here's the applications that we just exported out. Only the applications, no connectivity, no associations. We're just bringing it in from an external source. We're gonna bring them in as links and we're gonna select for all. And we're gonna hit okay. And here we go, we have our assets. Now we are exposing the tag values and you all remember how to do that. You go to elements and you simply turn on or off the fact that you want to see tags. In this particular case, we do want to see tags, so we're going to turn it on. You could certainly turn on other things if they're available for that, and we're going to hit OK, right? We're going to grab all of them, Control A, or just drag your mouse and sort everything that you want. We're going to go to Layout, and then you've learned how to do this in di Diagram Layout. We're just going to do a box form, right? Let's center these a little bit. And now we've brought in all of our assets, including the tag values. So how do we do this? And how do we bring in an external source? Let's talk about that next. Now here we have an external export from the database, from the asset database. And it has its own field or column names. In this case, asset, type, description, version, the application ID, a leverageability indicator as for asset leverageability, what stack the asset is categorized for, any scaled factors involved, ratings, responsibility, its primary responsibility and stage. So here's our, the, the data that we want to bring in to Sparks and we need to configure it in order to do that. So we need to extract this data and then we need to transform this data, including its column references, in order to load into Spark. So here we have the original source with its column names, all right, that are here. And what we're going to do is we build a template that has the Spark's transformed column names, right? So what you see here is name, type, notes, and version. And then we want to bring in these tag values that we see here. So asset transforms the name. We're going to reuse type. We're going to transform description into notes. We're going to reuse version column. We're going to transform app ID into 
AID. The application is a tag value, right? This is going to be another tag value, leverageability. So what we're doing is we're prepending tag value camel, it's in camel form, underscore, and then we're going to reuse as much as possible. AI, we, we did app ID, we changed it to AID, because that's the tag value that we want to configure and use, right? So we're prepending tag value underscore to each one of these during the transformation exercise. So this is our template that we're going to be loading data into. So whatever ETL tooling that you're using, and there's lots of tooling for doing ETL, ex extract, transform, and load, basically the finished product is going to load our template so that it looks something like this. And then we can, of course, come in here and format this when it's done any way we want, all right? So now we have our CSV loaded flat file to, that's ready to bring into Sparks. So let's do that next. Now I must note that the asset management tool is web-based, so it uses HTML tags, bold, underline, etc., unordered list, ordered list. It uses that. So that's how the data is stored in the database where the data had come from. And we maintain those tags the HTML tags within the source data. During trans transformation, you can certainly remove tags, add tags, transform tags, so that they can be better used universally. But I just wanted to make a note of that before we get into the next step. Let me show you how we configure our specification. So we're gonna go to the exchange specification. We already started for the application asset. We named the CSV specification. We did some requirements on exactly what we want. We want name, type, notes, version. For tag values, we want the asset ID, leverageability. These are all the tag values that we want. We haven't done anything yet as far as loading, so we want to add name. We want to add type. We want to add notes. We want to add version. I'm, I'm looking up here on the, my requirements. For tag values, we need AID. So when you're adding tag values, you're using a different data source for those tag values that are relevant to those objects in the T-object table. And we're just gonna bring in values. We're not gonna bring in notes. So you select this, you get this dialog box, add tag value field, and then you select out of all the tag values that you define, and these are all canned, this first one is custom all the way down here. These must be predefined, otherwise they're not gonna show up. Let's go ahead and cancel out. Let's close this. Let's go to settings, UML types, tag values, all right? So in tag values, we've already configured AID. We've already configured leverageability, LOE. These are the tag values that are already configured that are selectable to be loaded into the Sparks database. So the tag values that we wanna bring in are, first one's easy because it's right at the top and that's AID. We wanna bring that in. So it prepends tag value to the AID, all right? So it's using the same tag value that we have to transform from our external source, all right? And we just continue to go down through here and look at what the items that we want to bring in. So AID, leverageability, leverageability, doesn't matter whether it's uppercase or lowercase. So when I go to the drop down, it goes all the way down the list and finds leverageability, right? So the next one that we want to bring in is stack. So again, we're going to add, we're going to hit the drop down. We can just start typing ST, brings us down into the things that we can select from and we're gonna hit okay, all right? And it, we're gonna go through here and grab the tag values that we want to bring in according to our requirements for this import. All right, we have all of them in, and at any point, if you wanna change the order in which they show a left to right within your import, 
It doesn't matter. You can move up and down. So this is an export. If it's an import, you can move them up and down. Doesn't matter, right? So what we're going to do is this is an export. I usually start with export and then I worry about import when we're actually importing the data. So we have our flat file that's ready for import. You'll notice that some of these values from the repository are blank. There's nothing in there, all right? They may not be necessary for the asset repository, like the asset repository may not hold the notion of impact. This may be from another table that's relevant to specific projects and they, we can do a mashup if we're focused on importing specific project data from a da external database, but these are blank. The reason I'm showing this to you is I want you to see what happens when we import in this flat file. So let's go here to our blank project. We have our namespace called application building blocks. It's completely empty. There's nothing in the diagram or the package. And we're going to go to publish, model exchange, CSV. We're going to bring up our import export. And then we're going to choose the proper template here. It is default configured to export. We're going to change the import. We're going to make sure we're in the proper repository for the flat file we need to import. And it is in the project namespace, asset repository, open library. There may be a lot more files for your library that you're bringing in. And we're bringing in Sparks app, app asset library. So we're ready to go. We make sure we save the file that we want to import. It is class element types. It was it's default to export. We're going to change to import and we're going to run this. So we're running the file and it's going through and building the class elements as we speak. All right, it is complete. We could certainly view the results if we wanted to, or we can simply close. We're just gonna close, we go to the namespace. Here's the applicate class elements that we just import. These are applications in this case, it could be any class element as a type. All right, we're gonna bring them into the diagram. We're gonna, as a link, and we're going to select for all that we want to bring in, right? And here they are. We had tag values turned on in the diagram right here. If not, they wouldn't be showing. We have to make sure we turn those on. Then we're going to select all of them. We're going to go to layout. We're going to go to diagram layout and let's choose box, right? And there we go. We've brought in these elements from an external source with their tagged values or tags. Let's look at each element. We're going to bring the properties up here, park it right to the right of the diagram. And in this, when we select that element, we have the ability to look at tags, element properties and tag properties. And you'll notice that any element that was brought in, any tag value that was brought in that was null, the way we configured our tagged values was the default, let's just go to AID, now let's go to impact, was the default was make a selection, all right? And you learn about tag values in another video, how to build them, and anything that was null allows us, tells us to make a selection. And here, we're ready to configure the assets that we brought in for any project use. So in tags, as we're moving around, you can see which ones have been populated and which ones were null and ready to be populated. Now things like AID, the asset ID, that's coming in from whatever the source is. And if you're creating a new asset, you would give it a new ID here, but we're not gonna do that. That's not where we manage. These key values, they're managed in the asset repository. Now let's take what you've learned, go into our empty repository here, and we're gonna use model exchange, CSV, and we're gonna choose template for that's limited. It's configured by default to export. We're gonna use import. We're going to browse for the flat file that we want. It is in the open library, and it is already sitting there for us as limited 
and we're going to go ahead and import and run this particular file. It's adding the elements to our model. It's done, we're gonna close, we're gonna go over and we're gonna grab these applications. Let's just grab all of them, one at a time or what have you, and drag them all in, copy for all. There we go. Let's turn on element tags and let's look at what we've got. All right, we're gonna go to layout, box, and there we go, all right? So here we have the basic tags. You have the application ID, you have leverageability out of the asset repository, and then you have a stack reference, all right? There is nothing else that's in here. If we look at properties for tag values, you can see for each one of these, there's just these three tags. Now let's say that the solution architect is done with their block diagram and in their tag value diagram, they've completed the tags that are here and they want to export this into a flat file for solution use. Again, the diagrams do not need to be open. You just need to be in the namespace that you're exporting. All right, so we're going to go to CSV import export. We're going to come down here and the template we're going to choose this time is solution export. We're going to browse where we're going to place this. We go to our project repository, our folder where we're keeping solution, and we're gonna reuse the name solution. And we may put in a date here. Let me uh, do something, make this as small as possible. Let's just make this today's date, 09-12-24, and then save this version. However, you're going to version this, right? So now it's going to be saved to this file. Let's go ahead, we're gonna run an export. Let's go ahead and run it. It is done. Let's close this and let's go view the document. Now we can see the output that came from that export. Let's just go ahead and change the widths here. And I'm not gonna worry about notes. Uh, I could make that a lot, lot larger. Don't need to worry about it. But all of the updates for all of the tag values from solutioning that were not in the previous work now that their building blocks are done, are now available. Each time they version the document, they can make changes to uh, scaled factors, level of effort, impact, anything else, and continuously update this flat file that can be used outside of Sparks for other project delivery. All right, let's wrap up. I got to get back to my day job. I got a call coming up. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, thank you, Dana, so much for the post, asking the question and bringing this up at this time. So today you've learned how to take an original data source. In this case, it's in Excel. Soon you'll learn how to bring it in from a database and your assets once, one at a time, regardless of what they are, and transform them into a file that can be imported into Sparks Enterprise Architect as whatever type of element you need to bring in. So thanks very much for watching and until the next episode, happy modeling.